place where superheroes do battle. And it's not the comic books. It's Mexico. And the event is the Lucha Libre. It may look like professional wrestling, but the Lucha Libre is more than sport or theater. For Mexicans, it's almost mythic. A struggle between good and evil. That's because some of the wrestlers also take their fight outside the ring, right into the streets. They're strong men who put on their costumes and fight for the real underdogs, the poor and the homeless. South of the border, they've seen their share of great warriors. But now, a new breed of conquistador strides forth. And his battlefield is a canvas mat, 20 feet square. In Mexico City, Nearly a million people a year leave the crime and the traffic and the pollution behind and enter the magical world of the Torreo Arena. Inside, a special kind of hero. Mexicans have their pop stars and their soccer stars, but none capture the popular imagination like the wrestlers of the Lucha Libre, the free fight. It's one of Mexico's biggest sports, and the fans are intensely loyal. None more so than 91-year-old Virginia Aguilera. I used to be a bullfighting fan. I love bullfighting. But when a bull killed the great matador Manolete, I said, I'll never go again. I'll choose something else. And I chose Lucha Libre. My husband took me to see it. I used to get frightened. I say, look, they are going to kill him. No, Virginia, they won't kill him. Oh, yes, they will. I used to get real frightened and chew my fingernails. <laughs> but now I know they are not going to kill each other. The Lucha Libre grew out of circus sideshows over 50 years ago, but for Virginia and her countrymen, it's turned into something much bigger. At its core, the men who wear the mask, Atlantis, El Misterioso, Dr. Assassin, even Darth Vader. The masks may look modern, but they're inspired by ancient Aztec traditions of masked warriors. By concealing their identities, the fighters become more than just men. They are symbols of good and evil, right and wrong. The Lucha Libre isn't simply a sport, it's a giant morality play, myth in the making. Every week, the fan magazine Sensacional de Luchas chronicles that myth. Read by two million people, it's the literature of the street. Small wonder the young men of the barrio dream of becoming wrestlers. The dream begins here, at the Gimnasio Gloria, one of many gyms where beginners are taught the skills they'll need to compete. In five decades, the Gimnasio has turned out a string of champions. The coaches say that poor kids make the best fighters. They come in small and scrawny and, above all, angry from rickety shacks and reform schools. 
they dream of coming out national heroes. I'm still young, but I've got ambitions. I'm going to get ahead. Above all, they dream of El Santo, the saint. I'm going to be a star like El Santo. The public really loved him, and he's never been forgotten. I want to be like him. Seven years after his death, this wrestler's legend continues to grow. His 52 films are now pugilistic classics. In this corner, it's Caveman Wellington and Rod Mendoza! In this corner, the Black Shadow and the man in the silver mask is Samson! El Santo's manager was Carlos Suarez. El Santo, el mascaro de plata. El Santo, in the silver mask. He was the greatest idol of wrestling. That's not to say that El Santo was the best. No, sir. But he had the greatest personality. In the ring, El Santo was a giant. He projected something that words cannot explain. There have been many other heroes, Superman, black men, but they were all make-believe. El Santo, he was a man, a real man. On the screen, the man became a full-blown myth, a superhero. Here we have the first mask used by El Santo. Its history goes back so many years, it would be impossible to tell it all. Here we have other masks, relics from El Santo's fights, trophies, trophies everywhere, and presents from the public. But he never touched them, because he was a man who would never smoke or drink. He was... El Santo. Santo. Santo Even when he died in 1984, his identity was never revealed. El Santo was buried in his mask. Today in Mexico City, they need their heroes more than ever. The oil boom has come and gone, and now 20 million people are crammed into the city, many living lives of grinding poverty on the streets. Out of these slums rises the man they call Super Barrio. Super Barrio is more than just a wrestler. With his cape and his mask, he's a symbolic everyman, a crusader who fights for the poor and the needy. Para que el gobierno cumpla sus compromisos de hacer valer un derecho que tenemos a la vivienda, a los mexicanos. Tenemos acuerdos con ellos que no se han cumplido y vamos a presionarlos para que hagan su trabajo. Whenever injustice or corruption raises its ugly head, the call goes out for Super Barrio. In the streets and in government offices, the wrestler is a forceful spokesman. But he does his best talking in the ring, 
Super Barrio stages symbolic fights like this one at Cuernavaca, where he shows his support for local people facing eviction by taking on his cruel arch nemesis, Tony the Landlord. <laughs> Es mi colonia, es mi ciudad donde quiera. Pregúntale al de a tu lado, al que está atrás, al de enfrente. Si sabe que está parado, donde se mira de frente. Aquí ya nos está el barrio, vamos todos a bailar. Al ritmo del vecindario, los pasos para adelante y un brinquito para atrás. There are others as well who fight for a cause. En nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Que la gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, el amor del Padre, la comunión Since 1977 Father Sergio has been a wrestler. In Mexico, they call him Father Storm. His mask rarely comes off in public, whether he's fighting in the ring or saying mass. My life was very difficult. I used to be an alcoholic and a drug addict. I used to fight all the time. I still have the scars on my hands. Then one time when I was having problems, I went to see a priest in a church to get advice and he turned me away. So I said to myself, if there were priests who could understand us, many young people would change. And from then on, I changed. Father Storm studied philosophy in Spain theology in Rome, but in the ring, he puts his faith in a vicious drop kick. church gives Father Storm its blessing, it's because all the money he makes as a wrestler goes to support an orphanage. Ninety abandoned children depend on him. He must find the money, thousands of dollars a week, to care for them, to feed them, and provide them shirts and shoes. This is Father Storm's greatest battle, and the children keep coming from all over the country. I was living in Guadalajara because my mom was in the hospital there. I was taking care of my little sister, but she died. She was only two. A month later, my mother died. My relatives came and took me to Mexico City. They brought me here. And now I'm here with the others, happy. I 
Things have always been tough in Mexico, but never like this. The peso is almost worthless, and every day is a struggle for those on the streets. Theirs is the real lucha, the real fight, and life has already dealt them a body slam. Their need for a hero is so overwhelming that it was only a matter of time before they brought their greatest champion back to life. Hijo mío, te he estado preparando para que ocupes mi lugar. Te he enseñado a amar a los pobres y a los desvalidos, y ahora estás listo para ayudarlos y defenderlos. Through the magic of the silver screen, El Santo is reborn in the son of El Santo, and the legend lives once more. Tienes que saber una cosa. Una vez que te la pongas, ya nunca podrás retroceder. Ahora dime, ¿estás dispuesto? Sí, padre. Lo juro. Tómala. Con esto te transmito todos mis poderes. And so the battle begins again for the son of El Santo and the fans from the barrio. On his shoulders, he carries their hope, the hope that they too can triumph at the lucha of life. All it takes is a virtuous heart and a strong right arm.